All right, let's get that money, honey. I get loads of people, like maybe daily, who come up to me and say, Joe, I want to be an investor. I'm going to flip houses. What do you think? While I see, I don't know, one, two, three percent actually follow through with it successfully, I'll tell you, if you've got a plan, you've got a process, you educate your butt off, you can do it. Anybody can. This video gives you the five things that you, as a flipper, need to give to that potential investor if you want to get their money. So you know me, I don't like wasting time. Let's get right into it with number one. How much cash do you want from them? It's nice to find an investor who's got enough money to fund your entire deal, right? You got to deal with one person, you get all the cash up front, easy peasy. But sometimes if you're looking for enough money, you might need to get multiple investors involved. If you tell them you need this much money and they've only got this much money, it's okay. And the reason it's okay is you go find four, five, six, however many you need, investors, and they each give what they can afford or what they're comfortable giving until you get the amount you need. Number two, how long are you keeping my money, buddy? An investor's gonna wanna know, as anyone would, when I give you that cash, when am I getting it back? So every real estate market is different and every flipper has a different level of expertise. All right, so a simple rule of thumb is to look at the price point that you're gonna sell that home in and how long on average does it take to sell those homes? So if we say it's 30 days, plus it takes on average maybe 30 days to close, you're looking at two months and I'd throw in another month as a conservative cushion. You're looking at two to three months is how long you're going to want that investor's cash. All right guys, if you're loving the information that I'm putting out and you want even more, go check out my Instagram handle where I've got loads of information or you can go over to my Facebook business page and I'm gonna blow your mind with even more. All right, and then you're gonna to wanna to send them comps and I'm gonna take it a step further and say explain the comps. I see a lot of realtors and investors giving the comps out and they don't wanna do the work. So they just hand you some comps and they expect you to read into them. If you think the home that you're buying is eventually gonna sell for $300,000 and you're sending them a comp for 293 and 310, don't just send them the three comps. Send an explanation. I like doing videos, you can write it out, it doesn't matter, and say, the one at 290 has a little bit less square feet, it's two years older, so I think our home is going to get more than that because of it. The one at 310 is three years newer, it's got a little bit more square footage, so I think that one is probably a little bit more than the one that we've got. But the one at 300,000 is very comparable on a lot of fronts, so for those three reasons, this home will likely sell around 300,000. As the guy handing out cash, man, I feel comfy after hearing that pitch. Do the work for them, make it easy, and they'll want to hand you cash. On any flip, you're gonna have some sort of repair or update that you want to put in that home to make it better and more marketable. Let that investor know exactly what those repairs are, what those updates are, how much are they gonna cost, where are you getting your estimates from, are you doing the work or are you hiring it out? If you're hiring it out, what is the labor? If I'm the guy giving you the money and I see that you've done all this math, you've put in all the effort all the time, I'm not questioning if you're ready to go on this. I'm confident in you. All right, last but not least, in fact, I'd probably say this is the most important of the bunch, is the ROI that that investor can expect to get when they eventually get their money back. So the money that they're getting back, you should tell them the cash amount and a percentage. All right, so let's do some quick math just to give you an example. And I'm making this up on the spot, so we'll see how good my math is. Let's say the home that you're looking at is going to eventually sell for $300,000. Now you figure conservatively you're gonna lose about 10% on all the closing costs, bringing it down to 270. Then you're gonna have repairs and updates that total $30,000. That puts us down to 240. Now you wanna make $20,000 on the deal, and you're gonna offer the investor $10,000. That's another 30 grand, so now we're down to 210. You're gonna need the $210,000 plus the 30 for the repairs and fixes for a total of 240. You're offering them $10,000, which is just a hair over 4% for their ROI. Now, if you're looking at 4% and you're comparing it to, I always look at an S&P 500 index fund, right? And you're averaging maybe 10% a year. 
4% sounds dismal. But you gotta remember folks, the timeline was two to three months. If I can repeat that process as the guy giving out the money every single three month period, I can do that four times. I can make four, 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 four. I can make 16% of my money. I'm digging that number. Those are the five things that if you give them to an investor, will up your chances of getting the cash and will make for a better long-term relationship with that investor. If you like this video, please go down and hit that like button. If you loved it, man, would I appreciate a subscribe. And you guys, stay fired up. So today, people know me as the house flipper on HGTV. What they don't know is I've flipped almost 500 houses and what they also don't know is I got into real estate when I was only 20 years old and I built my house flipping career with the foundation from selling real estate. I was motivated, I was driven, and it was the most difficult thing I had ever experienced in my life. I would go on these listing appointments, I would give an amazing presentation, I knew my stuff, but people would always go with a different agent because they were more credible. What does that mean? They might have sold more houses. But back then, you're talking about agents that sold like five houses over two years. Sure, I was a good agent, hadn't sold any houses, but I still lost the deal because I didn't have the credibility. Through a series of events, I ended up meeting the owner of Broker Agent Chad, and it was actually a really funny meeting because the first thing I said, I was like, dude, I love your magazine. When I was first in real estate, when I was a 20 year old kid, my dream was to be in your magazine. And talk about full circle, now I'm sitting there having lunch with the owner of Broker Agent years later, right? But I, I'll never forget the first time I saw that magazine. I, I told myself, I have to make that magazine. At the end of the day, people are gonna work with you if they trust you and if you're credible. Broker Agent is a free award program that will separate agents from their competition. So if you knew by getting this award that you'd go on your next listing appointment and actually win that listing appointment because of the credibility of the program, would you do it? Of course you would do it, you have nothing to lose. So if you have an opportunity to separate yourself from the competition, get more deals and make more money, why wouldn't you do it? And that's why we're here talking about Broker Agent. It's a free program, it gives you credibility, and it has a solid name. It is a trusted brand, and that's exactly why you should get involved.